Good morning, my brothers and sisters. And I greet all of you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I say welcome to hybrid worship here at St. James AME Church. I am the Reverend Dr. Dante Wynn Kinley, the very fine pastor of this beloved congregation. And I just want to just take this opportunity to welcome all of you to our hybrid worship experience. Do me a favor, my beloved brothers and sisters, like, comment, and share this particular live so that we can enter into everyone home that will allow us to be a blessing to their lives. My brothers and sisters, let us now go into our hybrid worship experience now in progress. Come on, you got five minutes. <laughs>
Come on, we shall overcome. Amen. Yeah. 
put your hands together for the Lord. As our praise team lead us into worship, we have prayer and scripture by like Central William E. Richburg, and we will have another selection by our dynamic praise team. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. God's 
Amen. And by that time, the whole church got on fire. Hallelujah. Y'all act like no stuff in this church. Y'all like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that sometimes we need to go back to the old church. Yes. Yes. Where we didn't have to give you all these instruments to give God praise. Only thing we had the clapping of our hands. Patting of our feet and the slapping of our thighs and the opening of our mouth and the slapping of our chest. It says, When I think of the goodness of Jesus and of all that He done for me, hallelujah, Jesus. Remember my grandmama right now. Yeah. That's okay. Oh God. Amen. When that song used to hit, they had to put a whole circle around. Thank you, Jesus. We don't got things like that no more. We get too pretty. We get too sophisticated in church now. Hallelujah. Well, every now and then, when the spirit get a hold of you, I tell folks, I tell folks, don't hold me. Hold some of them cute folks around here. Let me praise the Lord. You don't know what the Lord done for me. You don't know how he set me free. Thank you, God. Thank you, Thank you, God. All right, let me, let me, let me act like I got some sense now. Brothers and sisters, at this time, our announcements for this morning, I feel Jesus. Thank you. Our announcements for this morning, my brothers and sisters, we want to just take this opportunity to praise God for all of the birthdays. Amen. Persons who are celebrating birthdays in the month of February, we want to say happy birthday to you. Come on, put your hands together and let's celebrate all those persons who are celebrating birthdays in the month of February. And I pray that God will give you uh, many more birthdays to come as God continues to strengthen you and bless you as you continue to go out in 2022. Amen. Again, my brothers and sisters, we are just grateful, amen, that we are entering into the year of our Lord of 22, the year, my brothers and sisters, of miracle sign and wonders, and God is doing a new thing in the life and ministry of St. James Church. Amen. We give God praise and we give God honor for what God is doing in the life of St. James Amy Church. And we are all so grateful and indebted to the Reverend Moses Rimbert and Lady Rimbert and all of the brothers and sisters of Brown Chapel Amy Church. Come on, put your hands together for opening up their doors and allowing us, my brothers and sisters, to utilize the facility while we are in renovation, and so we give God praise for them for all that they are doing. Our sister church, as we call it, amen, that they open up their doors for us, amen. The next announcement, my brothers and sisters, those of you that have not yet, you still have time uh, to buy brick in the, on the cost in the amount of $150. You may pay those bricks in any platforms, that we have, my brothers and sisters, and we are just grateful to God for what God is going to do through this, this project that we have going on at the church. Amen. This project ends the last Sunday in the month of March. And so I'm encouraging all of you, my brothers and sisters, those persons who are ancestors or those persons that still remain, you still have an opportunity to purchase a brick um on that behalf amen thank you so much the next announcement my brothers and sisters our ash wednesday celebration is coming up this coming wednesday and we praise god for the reverend tim mckenzie who is the pastor of the emmanuel church amen who will be hosting the ash wednesday service on uh this coming wednesday and our guest preacher 
will be none other than the Reverend Lester uh, J. Drayton, amen, pastor of the Chappelle Memorial AME Church in Columbia, South Carolina. And so I'm asking all members on Wednesday that you will come by the church uh, at 5.30 to about 6 o'clock to, to pick up your ashes so that we can prepare ourselves for Ash Wednesday service. And also, I'm going to include my brothers and sisters that Wednesday you will also pick up your communion elements, amen, as well as Wednesday between those hours, amen. And so we're asking my brothers and sisters that you govern yourself accordingly. It is virtual. We'll make sure that you get the information for the Zoom or you can look at the screen and jot down the information for the Zoom information for this coming Wednesday. And so brothers and sisters, I'm encouraging all of St. James uh, Church to be in a, attendance and present um, for this wonderful service of Ash Wednesday service as we kick off the season of men. Praise God. The next uh, announcement for brothers and sisters on the second Sunday of March, which is March the 13th, we will have and host our Family and Friends Day worship experience. And we are just delighted and happy and excited to have none other than the Reverend Dr. Alan Wayne Harrop who is the presiding elder of the Charleston district. And so my brothers and sisters, we're looking for a wonderful time in the Lord and we will have all of the necessities information for registration for this particular service that will be different from the regular registration that we normally have on Sunday morning. And so we asking and encouraging all of you, my brothers and sisters, that you will join us and participate in this family and friends day. And yes, come vaccinated, amen, praise God. Also, last but certain not least, our Reclaim Holy Convocation is April the 21st to the 23rd in Florence, South Carolina. The registration is now open for those persons who are interested in going. Um, the registration is now open, amen, and praise God. Um, that's all the announcements that I have for you on this day, my brothers and sisters. I also want to bring to your attention that we will have Bible study, amen, that will resume on this coming Tuesday at 12 noon, praise God. And so we're asking brothers and sisters that Bible study will resume on this coming Tuesday at 12 noon. And also, we will have our official board meeting on tomorrow night at 6.30, amen, at 6.30 on Zoom, and we'll make sure that you get all of the information that you need uh, for the official board meeting, amen, praise God. That's all the announcements that I have for you on this day. Can we put our hands together, my brothers and sisters, because it is given time. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. It is given time, and we are happy to give, my brothers and sisters, because the Bible teaches us that if you give unto the Lord, the Lord will give unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, that you may not have room enough to receive. For God said that he will and can open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon each and every last one of you that you may not have room enough to receive. You can't beat God's gift, no matter how hard we try. And so my brothers and sisters, those of you that would like to be a blessing or sow seed into the life and ministry of our beloved congregation, we have three magnificent ways that you can be a blessing to our church. Um, the first way is going to our website by typing www.stjamescola.com. There's a button there that you can give through our online giving. The second method, if you have an Apple or Android device, you may download that app called Givelify and search for St. James AME Columbia, and you will be able to give through that apparatus. Amen. Or you can just go to the website, click that Givelify.com. 
and it would directly go to the unified apparatus. But last but certainly not least is what I call the OG way, that you may mail your gifts to the P.O. Box 5594, Columbia, South Carolina, 29. 250. Again, my brothers and sisters, I ask that you will go ahead and prepare your hearts and your minds to give. Amen. At this time, we ask that you will hold up your electronic device or your envelope as we uh, bless our gifts on this day. Repeat these words that God, I thank you that I have it to give. Thank you for allowing me to be a blessing to St. James Church. Now, God, multiply it, use it for your glory and for your honor. This I ask in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. I see that you're giving, my brothers and sisters, and we are highly appreciate that you are continuing to sow into the kingdom of God. Well, brothers and sisters, it's preaching time, and I don't know about nobody else, but I don't know if you ready to hear a word from the Lord, but I want you to know that there is a word from the Lord. Amen? Amen. And after the singing of this dynamic uh, uh, praise team, the next voice you will be hearing is gone through the vessel of your pastor, me. Right 
I'm going walking up the Practicality. Allow me to read Acts chapter 27, 34th verse through the 44th verse in the English Standard Version of the text. That is Acts, the 27th chapter, the 34th verse, ending at verse 44. And it says, therefore, I urge you to take some food. It will give you strength. For not a hair is to perish from the head of any of you. And when he had said these things, he took bread and giving thanks to God. In the presence of it, he broke it again and began to eat. Then they all were encouraged and ate some food themselves. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. And when they have eaten enough, they lighten the ship, throwing out the wheat into the sea. Now when it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a, a bay with a beach or which they planned, if possible, to run the ship ashore. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea. At the same time, losing the rope that tied the rubbers. Hallelujah. Then hosting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the vessel around. The bow struck and remained unmovable. And the stern was being broken up by the surf. The soldier's plan was to be killed, the prisoners lest any should swim away and escape. But the centurion wishing to save Paul kept them from carrying out their plans. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make for the land, and the rest on the planks on a piece of the ship. 
That's a word right there. And so it was that all were brought safely to the land. That's enough for today. My brothers and sisters, the word of God, for the people of God, thanks be unto God. I want to preach for a little while with these thoughts in our minds. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to get through this. Those of you who are watching, you might want to comment that in the comment section. I'm going to get through this. Matter of fact, can we make it personal? Can we make it collectively? Just shout out, we're going to make it through this. Amen. If you believe that, put your hands together and bless God's name. Let's work it out. Brothers and sisters, according to this text, for the 14 days, Paul and the company of 275 passengers, consisting both soldiers and prisoners, have been shipwrecked, stuck on a ship, lost at sea, facing a storm. A storm they thought would never come to an end. For 14 days, their hopes, their dreams, and all of their future plans and aspiration has been drifting away at sea. They travel without eating food or fearing for their lives, and I'm sure they probably lost their appetite. But the good news of this text, my beloved brothers and sisters, was there was a preacher, a saint on board by the name of Paul who knew as a result for both his faith in God and because of the promises that he has received from God. He knew that everything was going to be all right. Matter of fact, in verse 25, Paul told all of the men on board, he said unto them, be a good cheer. Because no matter how dark the situation appears to be, Paul said, I believe God. And in, and in my Christian friends, in times of uncertainties, in times of heartaches, and even in those times where it seems like the world is working against you, it's during those times, those chapters in your life where you ought to say, I believe God will have a church. I believe God will show up in my life. I will, I believe God will get me through with what I'm going through. I believe God is going to hold my hand while I run this race. I will give all what God has intended for me to have. I will give me all, he will give me all of the strength that I need to get through with what I'm getting through. Amen. I believe God is on our side. Amen. I believe God is going to help me get through uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. I believe God is going to get us through the sicknesses that we are facing. I believe God is going to get my children through school. I believe God is going to walk with us and talk with us and tell us that he is your own. I just wonder, is there anybody in Cyber Church on today that can believe and comment that I believe God along my journey? I believe God will get me through and keep his promises. And I believe that God's promises is yea and amen. It's though it's through the challenging time where you got to say, like the hymn number just said, brothers and sisters, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. No matter how it looks like, my brothers and sisters, just learn how to lean on Jesus. No matter what you're facing, beloved, just learn how to lean on Jesus. No matter what they tell you, just learn how to lean on Jesus. Whatever your dilemma is, just learn how 
to lean on Jesus. Matter of fact, grandmama or big mama used to say, I've learned how to lean on Jesus and lean on his everlasting arm. Is there anybody that still have grandmama or big mama's theology? I would trust in Almighty God. I'm leaning on Jesus. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there anybody in Cyber Church that can say, Reverend, I'm not sure of the forecast of my future, but I do know this. I'm leaning on Jesus. I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to lose hope. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to lose my mind. I ain't going to start tripping, but I'm going to trust in God because I believe that he is everything to me. I believe he is still able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask, think, dream, or even imagine. Brothers and sisters, do you believe God on today? I believe that there is nothing that is too hard for my God. I believe that God can still make rivers flow down in dry places. I still believe that if it did it before, he can do it again. I still believe uh, that God can make the lame walk uh, and the dumb talk. Uh, I still believe uh, in the power of Almighty God. At the end of the day, beloved, I still believe God, whether you like it or not. And maybe, friends, your faith is not strong enough to see it or, or speak it or believe it as you're preparing yourself on this journey. But where are the people that are in cyber worship on this Sunday morning who has been through enough, who have seen enough, who have cried long enough, and who have suffered enough, who have been Lord enough, and you have been in church long enough to know just like what Job said, don't they slay me? Yet, will I trust him? I wish I had a church here. I don't know about, I don't know why I'm preaching this on this morning, but I need to tell somebody who's watching and listening to me on this day to leave this sacred space knowing that you better believe in God. I believe God will get me through this, my brothers and sisters. I believe God is still answering my prayers. I still believe God is going to work some things out in my child's life and in my family's life. I believe God is going to get me through the door. And I also believe that God is going to close the door so that I won't even walk through. I believe God is going to restore your marriages. I believe God. God is going to help you to pay your bills. I believe God is going to approve that loan that you've been praying for. I believe God that he's going to do the impossible. What men think impossible, the Bible say all things are impossible. If you only believe in God, I dare you to shout in church, I believe God. I believe in my spirit. I got a funny feeling and a sneak, sneaky suspicion that somebody inside the church is just like me that has the crazy faith to believe right now that God is up to something in your life. Matter of fact, can you just comment that in the comment section that God is up to something? I, I come today, all oh, my brothers and sisters, as your pastor and preacher, to tell you that no matter what you're dealing with right now, if you're still breathing, that means that God is still working. If you're still breathing, that means it's not over yet. If you're still breathing, that means the fat lady has not seen yet. If you're still breathing, that means the better is yet to come. If you're still breathing, that means it ain't over until God. If you're still breathing, that means God has another move for your life. Matter of fact, I believe that there's somebody ought to give God praise even right now in advance because no matter what you're going through, you still believe God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that this too. Brothers and sisters, this text 
teaches us and reminds us all today that none of us is able to escape the storms yeah. in our lives. Yeah. I preach, Dr. Kenley, I'm doing the best I can. I don't care who you are. Every last one of us will encounter a few storms and in our lives. And, and every last one of us will encounter a few storms. And if you in cyber church on this day, I hate to be the barrier of bad news so early in the sermon, but either you just lack the storm, either you in a storm, or you just keep waking up. Eventually, you'll be smack dab in a storm. But this morning, I want you to know that you got to get this together because you can't get through this. And I hear you in the supernatural say, help me, Reverend, how can I get through these things in my life? Well, I'm glad that you asked. You made me say, help me, God. I'm going to bless you on this day. Uh, it makes sense for all of these storms and since storms are going to be invisible. God, can you help me and believe and make sense of what all of these things that I can do to help me to get through this song? Well, brothers and sisters, I got three things, three lessons that you can gain from this text on this morning. Three things, and I'm done, beloved. Friends, you can get through this if you learn, number one, how to faith your way through it. Amen. Come on. How you got to say, my brothers and sisters, the first point is how to faith it until you make it. That's what I want to say. How to faith it until you make it. Now, notice I didn't say fake it for my church. I didn't say fake it until you make it. But I said you got to fake it, faith it until you make it. You got to get through in your mind right, right now, my brothers and sisters. You see, for some folks, when storm come, their Christianity is no good to nobody. Their faith becomes salty and their strength becomes small. But when storm come, you got to keep pushing and you got to keep grinding and you got to keep believing. If you believe that you can then already halfway there. Paul was sending the men on board a message that said, you can't lose your mind if you want to. You can't give up and wave the white flag of surrender if you want to. You can't remain in the continuous state of depression if you want to. You can't curl over and cave insane eyes over yourself a river if you want to. You can't continue talking and going in circle of uh, taking all of it's going on in your life, my brothers and sisters. You got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. He's gone. She's gone. Nobody knows the trouble I see. You can do all of that if you want to, but at some point, you got to declare that I will allow myself to die in a storm yeah. that I was meant to survive. Right. Ah, you got to tell yourself dying is not an option not for me right now. I shall live. I'm hurting, but I will live. I'm crying, but I will live. I'm broke, but I will live. I'm unhappy, but I will live. I have cancer, but I will live. I'm dealing with COVID, but I will live. I'm facing bereavement, but I will live. This is the part of the sermon. May not be for everybody, but I'm talking to you that God told me to tell you, you got to learn how to faith your way through. You don't know what faith is, right, church? But let me tell you, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Somebody inside the church on today is just like these men lost in a sea. 
You are right now between a rock and a hard place. Where all of us have left is your faith in God. You don't know where the storm is going to end. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know how it's going to work out. You don't even know how to respond. You don't know what's next for you. You don't even know how much strength you have left. And you're sitting at home or in church or at your time riding and watching me and listen to me right now really just holding on and trying to hold it together yes. who am i preaching to today they're saying hold i'm holding on and i'm holding and trying to hold it together i'm talking to somebody who's in a storm living through a test and you remember when we were all in school a teacher passed out the test and only question that you could answer on the sheet of paper was what is your name this is the sermon for somebody who's in a storm and you absolutely have no clue at how you're going to hit a shire, who's going to make it and how you're going to do it but you do know your name and you do know that his name is wonderful you know that he is a way maker you know that he's a heart fixer you know that he's a mind regulator you know that he's a healer you know he's a sustainer i want is there anybody know that whatever storm you in, you do know his name, Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You don't know that he's a friend when everybody has left you and gone. He is a miracle worker. And brothers and sisters, you got a you got to faith it until you make it. You just have to have enough faith uh, to call on the name of Jesus. Uh, you got to have enough faith, my brothers and sisters, uh, to call him by his name. Uh, you just need to talk to somebody who's holding on to a little bit of faith that you have left. But I came to tell my Christian friend, your faith may seem small, uh, but you have all the faith that that you need to survive, preach, dog. I'm doing the best I can. Can I tell somebody you don't need a whole lot of faith anyway? Because the Bible said if you have faith as a sign of a mustard seed, you can tell the mountain that it shall be removed. Your faith may be small, it may be weak, and even the faith may be better than no faith at all. Just comment in the comment section that I'm holding. Hold it on to my little faith. Amen. Amen. Just maybe there's someone who's listening to me and watching me that is saying that my faith ain't that strong. But I do know that you need to learn how to encourage yourself. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to learn how to encourage yourself. I don't know how to, uh, to look at myself in the mirror and say, self, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. I don't know to encourage myself uh, to look at myself in the mirror and say victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory today is mine. You just need to declare, my brothers and sisters, in your life and in your heart, you got to face it until you make it. And I don't know who I'm preaching to on this day, but I came to tell you that I have not in my problem, but giving up God ain't one. He has never failed me. He has never lost the case. The church mothers and church fathers would say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? The church mother and church father would say, it, it may not come when you want him to come, but oh, he is all. Preaching better than you say, amen. Ah, brothers and sisters, the first thing, the first thing you got to do is faith it until you make it. But secondly, Chastity, uh, you must understand that there's a making in the breaking. Uh, look, let the church say making in the breaking. Come on, say it again, making in the breaking. There are some things that you can only learn in a storm. Yes. 
Yes. I'm preaching all right. Right. Not all storms come to disturb your life. Yes. Right. Some storms come to clear the path. Uh, the Bible says after 14 days being shipwrecked, on the 14th day, the men on board, they see something that looks promising to them. From a distance, they see their future. They see the dry land. And after a final night of rest, they prepare themselves to safely to make it to dry land. But here is what the new problem that I see in the text with her. They were close to the dry ground. They were close to see both life and hope on the dry ground. They can see a future on the dry ground. But just like they were in pursuit of the promising possibility, just as they were close to a wonderful opportunity just before they were able to reach the dry land, they encounter a rock. Yes, sir. Ah. ah, yes, yes, brothers and sisters. They encounter a rock. A ship sailed straight forward and hit a reef. And the ship committed to break apart. And I don't know about what you call this, beloved, but this is what I call from bad to worse. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, with the ship with, that was on the shore is in view and keeping their hopes alive, they encounter a rock. In other words, at this point, a place of where things started to look up and the trajectory of their future was bright and fair and happy. That's when things literally started to fall apart. Beloved, have you ever been there before where you was just at a place where you almost was there and you were sure that thing was going to work out in your favor and for your good, but all of a sudden you hit a rock. Ah, uh, let the church say rock. Uh, a place where you could smell it. A place where you can see it. A place where you thought for sure you was home free. But instead, uh, you almost turned into a not yet. Uh, almost, but not yet. Uh, almost, but a miscarriage. Almost, but a setback. Uh, almost, one response that could you fail. Almost, but she cheated. Almost, but he lied on you. Almost for some more bad news. Almost, uh, but they hire somebody else. Uh, almost, but one response calls you to fail. Almost, but they got a copy of your criminal background. Almost, they pull your credit report. Almost, but the doctor said, I think I see something else. Uh, almost, uh, but they said no. Uh, almost, uh, but the counter offer was on the table. Is there anybody that have an almost? testimony that you heard that it was not yet. Everybody, everybody been close. Everybody been close. But as soon as you got close for some reason, you hit a rock. Oh, preach, doc. I'm doing the best I can. My Christian friends, it may want to propose. Can I propose a question on this morning for further discussion? What do you do when you hit a rock? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know what you do or what you're going to do, but you can allow the obstacles to become bigger than your opportunity. Right. Don't you allow the obstacles to become bigger than your opportunity. Right. No, brothers and sisters, never let the obstacle get bigger than your God that you serve. And I don't know, and I don't need to hear my brothers and sisters what you're going to do, but you better learn how to stop underestimating the move of God. You better stop underestimating the power of God. God is bigger than any supervisor you got to deal with. God is bigger than any sickness that you got to face. God is bigger than any problem you are dealing with. God is bigger. I dare you to shout, my God is bigger. You see, church, some people have already buried themselves as a result of their obstacles and already parking in handicapped parking spaces because of their obstacles. They already got a case 
because of the obstacle. But uh, this morning, I want to preach to people who's watching and listening to me to who refuse doing this morning sermon, the season of your life, the obstacles to stop you. But today you have a testimony and you want to say thank God for every obstacle in your life. I don't know who I'm helping this morning, but I've learned that you just learn out of the shadow of doubt that God will help you to get through with what you're going through. If it had not been some pain in your life, if it had not been some failures in your life, if it had not been some hard time in your life, you would not be here on this morning praising God from whom all blessings. That's why I thank God for every mountain. I thank God for every storm that he brought me through. For I never had a problem. I wouldn't know that God could solve it. Hey, but through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. And I've learned to trust in God. We serve a big God, beloved. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above that we may ask things or imagine. He can do anything, church. He can do what the doctor can't do. We serve a can-do God. He can fight our battles. He can make a way out of nowhere. He can dry your eyes. He can heal your body. There is nothing that God cannot do. You got to trust in him all the way. I'm almost done. But beloved, you got to learn how to give God thanks when you're going through your pain and when you're going through your suffering and when you're going through your dilemma. Just learn how to lift up holy hands and declare, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Lord, the help I know. I'm almost done, but you got to thank you. Until you make it. And then you got to understand. That there's a making in the breaking. Yes. But finally, as I take my seat, you got to learn how to be creative in your crisis. Let the church say, be creative in your crisis. Come on, comment that in the comment section. Creative in your crisis. The Bible says that when the ship hit the reef, when the ship hit the rock. Right. The walls of the ship began to break into pieces. There were pieces everywhere. Yeah. As the ship began to sink, the men on board had no other choice but to sink or swim. Yes, Lord have mercy. Right. But here lies another problem in the text, Sister Grant. Mm -hmm. On this ship, you don't have all free men but on this ship, you have soldiers and prisoners. Right. It was the job of the soldier to watch over the prisoners. And in the mind of the soldier, it was better for the prisoner to drown at sea than to make it safely to dry land and to be free. But watch this. So the soldier rather said, don't let these men get to shore. Kill every one of them right now. Because if they make it and live according to the Roman law, the soldiers would be killed. So there was an APB, all-point bulletin, that said, Mayday, Mayday, the ship is sinking, kill all of the prisoners. But then one brother of the centurion said, as he stood up and said, hold up, wait a minute, you can't kill these prisoners. Yeah. You can't kill these men because somewhere on the ship is a saint. Somewhere on the ship is a preacher, a child of God. We got to keep Paul alive. The Bible says all because of one man, the entire group of guilty people was saved. See, y'all don't know when it's shot. I think I just said something right there. All because of one man, an entire group of rejects, lowlights, and losers, an entire group of guilty people had the chance to live all because of one man. Death had to put on brakes all because of one man. Sickness
bridges had to be rerouted because of one man who saved a whole ship. And if I had time, I would just give you some reason why you ought to stick your chest out on this morning. Yeah. It's because some people in your life right now who don't even talk to you like they used to talk to you and don't even care of what you're doing in your life. They don't even speak to you like they used to because the reason why is that they are who they are because of you. You helped them and you prayed for them. And the reason why the company where you work is still in business is because not of the CEO, it was because of you and God. It's because you work there. I wish you comment in the comments that I'm saving the ship for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why your family is still together yeah. is because God had his hand upon you. The reason why the plane didn't go down is because God was on board with you. Matter of fact, the reason why everybody inside the church on this day it's because you got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. And you have an instinct within your spirit that, that why they should get mad at what God is doing in your life. You just got to learn how to give God praise in spite of what people think or what they may say. You got to give him the praise whether you like it or not. And just because you get jealous of my blessing does not mean you ought to play a hate over my life. If you want to get mad, get mad with God. Because everything I own, everything I have, I give it to God and I praise him. I'm almost done, but when I look at the text one more time, oh, y'all have to see, I'm just teaching a little bit. I ain't in no rush. Uh, when I look at the text one more time, these men, they really had three choices. Uh, they could sink, they could swim, or they can just hold on to some broken pieces. Right. Y'all don't know what he's shouting. Right. Uh, in other words, the men had to become creative in their crisis. Yes. And that's what they resolved to do. The swimmers started swimming and the floaters start floating. Right. And then the others who was determined to make it uh, had to float ashore with some piece of broken pieces from the ship. They had to become creative in their crisis. And since this is Black History Month, and one of the reasons why I love being a black man is because I come from a legacy. We come from a heritage where we learn how to be creative in our crisis. During slavery time on plantation, our ancestors knew how to be creative. They worked all day from sun up to sun down, picking cotton, but when the day was over, they had to be creative. They couldn't worship on the cotton field, but when the sun went down, they met down by the riverside and start chatting soon. I will be done with the trouble of this world. They had to be creative in their crisis. And when the slave master placed us in pig pens to guard pigs in order for us to eat, we had to become creative. We used the mess from the pig and turned it into a delicacy. We made hot dogs and chitlins. We made some pig feet and fat back. We had to become creative in our prices. We turned a bowl of mess into a bowl of we had to be creative. We took the lesson that they gave us, and nobody can make some lemonade like a good old black woman. We learned how to be creative in our prices, and we are living large and in charge today. But how many of y'all can remember the days when you had to?
your pocket. You would know how to stretch $20 for a whole week. You didn't have flat screen or air high definition TV, but you know you had a TV screen. But that part on a crate and had a close hanger with a little foil on the end of it. You knew how to be creative. In your crisis. But don't forget where God has brought you from. Because you never know when you have to reach back and do it again. Well, brothers and sisters, I held you too long. But I came to tell somebody that according to the Bible, beloved, all the men was able to make it to shore all because they held on to some broken pieces. And I came to tell somebody this morning, all you have is a little piece. But I came to tell all you need is a little piece. You don't need an entire ship to make it, but you can hold on to the little piece. And the good news according to the text is that everybody made it safely holding on to the peace. Yeah. That's why, my brothers and sisters, you ought not to be jealous of somebody else's peace because we serve a God who's passing out peace every, to everybody. You might need to text somebody. You need to focus on your own peace and stop hating on what God has done for me. I just am grateful for what God has done for me because I love about God is that he can do a whole lot with just a piece. I believe I said it again that God can do a whole lot with just a little piece. He took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed five thousand. He took one rod from Moses and departed the Red Sea. He took one rock and a piece of a slingshot and tried the lion fell down. He took a piece of a ship and healed the blind man. He took a piece of his garment and a woman with the issue of blood was healed. God can do a whole lot with a piece. But what I should be happy of that one day, I said one day, he took a piece of himself, wrapped it up in swollen clothes. Yes, he did. He took a piece of himself and sent a piece to 42 generations. But I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad. He took that piece and put a piece on the cross. And he died. Didn't he die? He died upon the cross. He buried him on a piece of a grave. But early one Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. I came to tell somebody, you can't it. You can't take it because the storm of life keep on raging in your life and the winds keep on blowing in your life. But my soul, my soul is anchored in the Lord. Say it. Just like our ancestors had to do. 
God said that you can make it. And you can get through it if you just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. things in our lives we can honestly say that God has brought us a mighty long way. We can make it but we just need some help from God. Amen? We need that special touch from on high. But the question is, do you have that relationship with God that will make everything all right? Have you tried him? Have you leaned on God to know that everything will be all right? No matter what situation you're dealing with, you can call on that name of Jesus. Jesus, Mary's baby, there's no other name that will bring peace in the time of storm. Maybe there's one who just needs to have a talk with Jesus, tell them about their troubles. The invitation is extended to you. He's waiting to hear from you with open arms. Maybe there's one who's looking to join this particular church or a church somewhere in your vicinity. The officers and members of St. James Amy Church would love to welcome you in. Our pastor, Reverend Dr. Dante Wim Kennedy, would love to be your pastor. Or maybe there's one who just simply needs to talk with Jesus a little closer, who needs prayer. Maybe there's one. There's nothing to be ashamed of. At one point in our life, there's going to be a time where we're going to need to lean on Jesus. And if you haven't leaned on him, just wait a little while longer. There's going to be something in your life that's going to try your faith. And you're going to need to lean on Jesus. Can we call his name? Jesus. Let us call him like we mean. Jesus. You may be sitting home right now behind the screen. Jesus. 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 He's already there. All you have to do is call on his name. Just call his name. He already knows all about it. He's just waiting for you to talk with him. Jesus. 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 Let all earth proclaim. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus. Maybe that's one. Let us pray. Our wise and almighty God. We come right now calling on that holy and most righteous name. Because God, we know that there's no other name like Jesus. The one that can heal the sick and raise the dead. The one that in our darkest hours is right there to comfort us. Jesus. Jesus. The one that rose from the dead on the third day, declaring that all power is in his hands. God, we come right now asking for just a little closer walk with Jesus. Because God, in these times of trouble, in times of sickness, times of oppression, there's no other name that can get us through this storm but Jesus. So God, we ask that Jesus will continue to fix our hearts and our minds. Continue to save our souls. Continue to make our ways clearer. And continue to give us the strength to step over those stumbling blocks that man placed in our way. Because God, we know that at the name of Jesus, Every knee has to bow and every heart must confess that he is Lord. So God, we pray for those who don't know Jesus and we pray for those who may have wandered away. But God, we know that Jesus is welcoming us back home with open arms. So God, we cast our cares and our troubles on you because God, we know that you will make everything all right. So God, just continue to walk with us and talk with us and continue to let us know that we are your own because God, in these troubling times, God, when we cannot walk by ourselves, we know that Jesus will carry us. So God, we just ask that people be with us and continue to wrap his arms around us because God, we know that nothing can wash away our sin but the blood of Jesus. So we thank you, God. We will continue to praise you, God. And we will forever to give you thanks. God, we thank you. God, we love you. And we will forever call on your name. Right now and forevermore. And these we ask, these blessings we proclaim, in Jesus' name. Jesus. And let every heart say amen. 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 And the people of God should say amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Praise my brothers and sisters that the word has blessed you. The word has encouraged you. But most of all, that the word has allowed you to wrestle and challenge what you need to do from this point on. And knowing that God will take care of you. God will carry you through. And as you prepare yourself for this Lenten journey, just know my brothers and sisters that you are going to make it only if you believe in God. Amen. If our hearts and minds are clear, let us all stand over the sanctuary. Amen. We want to put our hands together for all of our online viewers. Let everybody say, let the church say, let the church say.
gonna get through this. May God bless you and may God keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance and give you his peace and his shalom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, let everybody say, let the church say, let the church say.